we're getting you all ready for game time tonight. We've got Robin Lopez's Road to the NBA, our Honeybee Spotlight, and a look at this new era of Hornets basketball from team owner Gail Benson. But first, the X's and O's. You set a franchise record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback with six. Comes on a game where you also promised your team you were going to be more careful about protecting yourself. Where did you learn about where the line is? Special treat this evening, we are joined by NBA Commissioner David Stern. Commissioner, you will be retiring soon in 2014. You uh, have been holding this job since 1984. When you look back, could you choose a greatest accomplishment in your legacy? Philadelphia's state of emergency officially began at 5 this morning as the city braces for Frankenstorm. Here on the field, wind gusts 25 to 35 miles an hour, rain coming in about 2. I spoke with Eagles special teams coordinator Bobby April, who tells me he's especially concerned about his return men and his punters. Conditions like this could move a ball a full inch for a punter, two feet for a return man. You can see April here on the field pregame trying to get a sense of the direction of the wind. Challenging thing about that, Dick, is swirling winds affect this field. So what you get pregame may not be what you get in game. So much controversy over this quarterback position for you personally. What does this win feel like and what does it mean to you on the road against Tom Brady and the Patriots? You were only sacked four times coming into this game, seven sacks this one. What did they do so effectively against you? Guys, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. And first question I have for you, such a young team, they've had some growing pains this year. But what area of growth have you seen the most since you started watching this team preseason? That's right, a trainer on either side had to assist him down into the Patriots locker room. It's an ankle injury for Hernandez. His return today is now questionable. And I can tell you this is kind of taking some of the wind out of the sails over on the Patriots sideline, a pretty somber group right now. It, it was really amazing. RG3's performance, in fact, drew a lot of comparisons to Cam Newton's rookie debut last season, highlighted by 422 yards passing. Now it'll be a little bit like deja vu as the black and gold defenders get set to face Newton in week two. Sean Fazan takes us inside the psyche of the Saints. Well, Dick, John, I tell you what, Michael Vick is trying to guarantee his durability this season, and this is the secret weapon underneath his jersey today. This is a Kevlar compression shirt, different than the vest he wore last year. It's supposed to deflect 30% more of the impact of the hit. At times, defending the three has been a challenge for this team. What would you think they need to step up to do a better job on that one? The Saints probably know Cam Newton a little bit better this season. If you look back at last season, the first game was a down-to-the-wire battle. It was decided by just three points. But then that second game of the season, the Saints really figured out how to contain Cam Newton. Pete Carroll would agree with you and John that that read option worked very well in the first half. But he doesn't want the Bills to know what to expect. So he tells me he may mix it up a little bit more in the second half. As far as Russell Wilson, he's very pleased with the decisions he's been making. Patrick Peterson's wife always sends him a pregame text. But it's nothing mushy. It is always football-related. Some sort of skill she wants him to work on or possibly possibly a challenge for today. She said, hey, I want you to get not one, but two interceptions. That was what she challenged him with. John, curious if your wife ever did anything like that. The Vikings are keeping their quarterbacks coach, Greg Johnson, down on the field this game versus where it usually is up in the booth, just to give Christian Ponder an extra set of eyes, a little boost of confidence. I asked him if he wished he had those timeouts back in that last drive of the first half, if he thought he could have managed the clock a little better. He said, absolutely not. That was the game plan. Had they not made one stupid mistake, it would have worked. Coach Leslie Frazier tells me you will indeed see both Percy Harvin and Adrian Peterson in the second half. Although both are limping on their left legs, they'll play through, and Frazier says they'll be just fine. That's the way New Orleans feels. They can best contend with the aggressive play of the Utah Jazz, who ranks second in the league in fouls, and also, Emily, might be out for a little bit of redemption. The past seven of nine opponents for the Jazz have scored above 50%, and Utah wants to limit that tonight. They are going to try their best to keep the Hornets out of the paint, eliminate those layups and those offensive rebounds. So tonight promises to be an aggressive physical battle. As they climatize, Denver may go a little bit better, and then Minnesota may be actually a boost for the Hornets after they're used to playing at such a high level. Coach, 24 points for the Jazz in the paint. You talked pregame about how this game would likely come down to how the Hornets defended them in the post. Assess your squad's effort and what you want to see differently second half. Then Tom and Gail Benson stepped in to purchase the team and answered those questions. Gail Benson was actually the driving force behind that decision to buy the team. And Bonnie Williams comes from a challenge background, one that required a lot of perseverance and dedication to overcome. Basketball was his way out, but now he says actually the game is his second priority. New Orleans 
Williams met Coach Monty Williams this past summer when he took the Hornets home. I'm not the guy that everybody thinks I am. But that's only a small part of who Tavares Montgomery Williams really is. Family is, is who I am, a coach. You need to leave that at the door, brother. We need daddy right now. William's most important title in life is dad. Where are your shoes? Okay, go get your shoes on. Mornings are his time with daughters Lyell, Faith, and Jana. Before Williams hits the court or the office. You okay, bud? He's done breakfast and carpool duty. Love you. Delivering the girls to school. Today, there are albums of sweet memories, but Williams hasn't always had the perspective he does now. I know I'm a jerk, you know. You catch me on the, you catch me on a day. No, I'm serious, it's, you know, I'm no different than anybody else. Growing up financially challenged in a single parent home, Williams had one goal. I just want to play basketball. <laughs> I want to make some money so I can get out the hood. That's what I was thinking. I just want to, I don't want to be broke. Then came the roller coaster of almost losing basketball in college after doctors diagnosed him with a heart condition. Next, the elation of a medical clearance and a professional career. The NBA is intoxicating. You get caught up in this lifestyle. The constant that now keeps Williams grounded. She's my best friend. It's not even close. And so if I have any secrets, it's her. Oh, 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 we'll go fast. His wife of 16 years, Ingrid. Family first, only family, and sometimes that's all you can do. Um, and that seems to help. You know, when you get involved in too much, then you get off balance. The Williams also have two sons, three-year-old Elijah and six-month-old Micah. Ingrid Williams doesn't use a housekeeper, a personal assistant, or a cook. She rarely calls a babysitter. Her girls split household chores between school, playing basketball, and running track. We'll do our homework, we'll take our bath, and then we'll take care of Elijah and make sure he's ready for bed because he's a handful. 13-year-old Lyell is the oldest. We usually have days for dishes, and I usually have to help out whoever's day it is. Then I'm in charge of the stove and the food, and um, we have to get that cleaned in less than 30 minutes because, you know, we got other things we need to do. Hey, all that trash needs to go out, please. Ingrid's recipe for a smooth family life revolves around a seemingly simple ingredient. Just try to keep the communication going all the time. You know, that's the key. That can be difficult with the Hornet's lengthy road trips. Go on the computer, do Skype with him, and call him on the phone. It's just my faith in God, that's what keeps me sane. That's all I have. That's all I have. That's all I can cling to. That's also possibly the most important gift Ingrid's ever given her husband. Monty credits her with igniting his Christian faith. I stay in my word every day because it gives me a blueprint for life. Part of Monty's life now revolves around spreading Christianity through mission trips and prison ministries. It's an experience that's flip-flopped how he sees basketball. Sports and coaching, it's all, it is what it is but we're really not doing much. You know, if, 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 if that's all it is, you know, if you're not sending that ladder back down with some supplies so somebody else can come on up with you, you're not doing anything. Please grab a bag, everybody. Or... It's a philosophy the Williams family strives to embody and carry with them wherever they go. Do you know the sixes and sevens? Okay, what's seven times four? And they're on the go plenty. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Doing well. They're at every Hornets home game, at least until halftime. And in his first year as head coach of the Yoga Hornets, Monty Ragnarok. Oh, there he is. The unwavering cheering section that helped Monty Williams redefine success and what life is all about. An amazing family. Thanks so much for sharing your story, guys. And one of these days, I've got to get uh, parenting tips from Ingrid.